Hello everyone, my name is Mariana and this is the Mission Violin Channel. Today we are going to talk about how to prepare the violin for your practice at home or your violin class. The first thing you need to prepare is the violin and you should have a shoulder rest. So this, this is what I have on my hand. There are different brands and models. The, uh, the reason we use it is to have more support of the violin on our neck. So I'm just going to put my shoulder rest to show you. Okay, we should have the, this part a little bit higher than the other, okay, because this is where the, sh the left shoulder is going to be. And then we just need to put the violin on our shoulder. All right. Also, you can just move and turn these parts to make the shoulder rest higher or lower. Okay? There are different brands of uh, shoulder rests, uh, but I cannot really recommend you today which one is best for you because that depends a lot of the height of, um, of your neck. So the best way is just to go to a violin shop and just try all the models they have until you find the best for you. If you have a small violin, I recommend you to use a sponge instead. The reason why is also because the shoulder rest tends to be a bit uncomfortable for children and sometimes they are also too high and a sponge will just make the violin stable on your shoulder. The way to put it, okay, I will just show you. I will put here the shoulder rest and I will keep it with an elastic. I will just exemplify so you can see it. So, this is how it should be. This elastic stay here on this button and the other part here. Okay, and you're good to go. There is also a trendy discussion um, amongst the community of violinists and violin teachers regarding the use uh, of the shoulder rest. Some people don't, do not use it, uh, and that's okay. Uh, I don't have any problem not to use it. Um, but since, my, since I play with the shoulder rest, I also recommend my students to use it. So, of course, there are some exceptions. Um, and if you're watching this video, if you have a violin teacher, just follow what your teacher has to say. I don't want this video to, to change your mind about it. Your teacher knows better, so just follow what he or she has to say. Alright, the next, next thing we need to prepare is the bow. And when we are going to prepare the bow, the hair should be a little bit loose. I will just show you. So when you take off from the violin suitcase, I don't know if you can see it. I don't like to touch and I don't recommend you to touch with the, with the fingers. But it's just for you to see how loose they are. Okay, so after we practice, we should put, put them loose so the bow can relax. Now, when you want to play, you need to have this button or I don't know how, which, uh, which way is better to describe it, you just need to rotate it and just put some tension on the hair. The best way for you to see is the middle area, okay? And usually I say to my students, it's, you should do it until you have a place for your pinky finger, alright? And even though I don't recommend you to touch it, but it's just to have an orientation. Don't compare the difference of the hair and the bow on the frog or on the or at the tip because at the frog, for example, you see there is plenty of space. Always compare with the middle area. All right. Next thing we should do is to use the rosin. My rosin is black and is round. Maybe yours has a different shape of co or color. Doesn't matter. And just hold on your left hand and just move the bow, okay? The whole bow, we tend to forget the frog area and the tip. So 
So those parts just kind of do an extra, just to make sure that it's in all of the bow, all of the hair, more precisely. Okay? And there is also another thing important to say is, with time, um, the hair tends uh, to get older. It's just a natural process. Uh, we cannot really do nothing about it. Um, so when they start to get old, you need to go to a violin shop or a violin maker to ask for a rehair. When is that moment? How should I notice when the hair is old? It happens uh, when you still use rosin, but when you play, you feel that the bow is sliding. It doesn't stay stuck on the strings. That's already one sign that you really should ask for a rehair. Another is the color, because when uh, the hair is brand new, it's really, really white. It's actually beautiful, very, very beautiful. Um, when it starts to get into yellowish or gray or black, you really should uh, go for and ask a new bow or even a new hair. So this is the bow I use. It's already a bit yellowish, and actually I'm going for a rehair next week. This is really, really old. So I'm just going to put here in front of the camera. So I hope you can see the difference on the colors. All right, I don't know if you can see it. Well, it's for me, it's, it's really, really, really clear. Maybe uh, when you have uh, re-hair, just make a picture, so then you can start to compare when the hair it starts to get older. All right, also some people um, wash the hair of the, vial, uh, the bow at home. I don't recommend you to do it, maybe these people do it because they don't know or they think they want to have this feeling the bow of being clean um, I don't recommend you at all to wash or even use any product product on the hair besides the rosin please just uh, if you need a rehair or to do something on the bow just ask for a professional to do it all right so um, I think those are my tips um, I will also make uh, a new video um, talking about how to put a new string on the violin. A lot of you have been asking, especially after the last video I did about how to tune the violin. So, those are my tips. If you want more videos, just subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon. Bye!